Spokane County Sheriff's deputies believe a murder suspect's cell phone could hold answers to his wife's murder. We look into the ominous note left behind with the cell phone. It's windy and dry across the inland northwest and red flag warnings are in effect for parts of the region. As housing prices climb across Washington state, state leaders are now looking into rent control. Not everyone is on board though. And what rent control oftentimes does is penalize the people who are looking for apartments. Hello everyone, it's good to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy. Welcome everyone, I'm Mark Hanrahan. Road construction season is now in full swing and the state has a new tool to keep employees safe. Take a look at these new machines. They're automatic flaggers. They'll replace construction workers to keep them from standing out in the road. They just arrived in Spokane last week, so drivers can expect to see them soon. Crem 2's Shana Walltower has more. Yeah, we've got all the orange on the sides of what seems like every street, but as you're driving past all the construction, keep in mind the workers so you can keep their safety and yours in mind. There are also some new technology updates that will help keep you all safe. These people that are working on the side of the road, they've got families and they want to go home and see their families. They do and you do too. Just paying extra attention can keep this from happening to you. This accident happened just back in March in Tacoma when a truck ran into a construction vehicle. There were no fatalities in this case, but it just shows how easily these accidents could happen. Just last year, right here in Spokane, a worker had a close call. A semi truck was pulling over slowly and a pickup truck went around and the um, the driver's side mirror of his pickup truck actually knocked the flagging pa paddle out of our flagger's hands. So to help, they've brought in technology like this, automatic flaggers that can keep workers out of the hot sun and further away from the road. They've also started using portable rumble strips, similar to the ones you normally see. It's just kind of that alert that's like, oh, I've just hit something. I should pay attention to see what's going on around me. Two years ago, Washington expanded its move over law. So just like you have to move over one lane for emergency vehicles that are pulled over, you have to do the same for construction vehicles when their lights are flashing. So it's just a matter of looking out and slowing down. It's all about awareness. So just keeping your eyes open, making yourself aware of the situation that you're in. In Spokane, Shana Waltower, Crime 2 News. At this time, it's looking like a, a, a tragic accident. Well, the Spokane Police Department says a woman drowned at the Centennial Hotel in Spokane this afternoon. Witnesses tell us she was pulled from the hotel pool. First responders administered CPR, but she, she died. The Spokane Police Department says it was an accident. The Spokane County Medical Examiner will identify the woman at a later time. Officials with the Grant County Sheriff's Office say they've arrested 38 people on 97 felony drug counts at the Paradiso Music Festival at the Gorge Amphitheater over the weekend. The Sheriff's Office says the amount of drugs they recovered made it clear the drugs were for distributing and not for personal use. The arrests were higher than normal, they say. The Sheriff's Office says that's because they increased the number of undercover officers at that festival. Well, it is a struggle for renters all across Washington state finding affordable housing. That includes here in Spokane. So there are talks on the state level right now about rent control. Oregon was the first state to pass statewide rent control regulations back in February. And just this week, New York lawmakers approved similar measures. And while some people believe putting a limit on rent will help keep renters in their rentals, others say it could make matters worse. Krem 2's Alexa Block looks into that. Rent control. We hear the term thrown around a lot, but does placing a limit on how much landlords can charge for rent really solve Spokane's affordable housing issue? Terry Anderson of the Tenants Union of Washington State believe it's a start. And once you got into a rental agreement, you would know every year to the next how much your rent would be going up so you could budget. Right now, rent control is illegal in Washington State. No city or county can set caps on rent prices. Tenant advocates say they'd like to see a statewide regulation on rent. A lot of speculation mentality and housing should not be a speculative market. It should be a human right where people know that they have a home to live in. And Steve Corker of the Landlord Association of the Inland Northwest agree people should have a home to live in. But rent control could end up creating more problems than they solve. It doesn't lower the market rate that's being charged for rents. And what rent control oftentimes does is penalize the people who are looking for 
apartments or homes. There are concerns that the state mandated caps on rent prices could force smaller landlords out of the business because they are unable to keep up with the increasing costs to maintain properties. So oftentimes what happens under rate control is a deterioration of, of particularly the properties that are serving the low income. Corker says the issue is there isn't enough housing and there needs to be more options throughout the region for renters. Our local and state leaders have differing opinions on whether rent control would become law here in Washington, but it is definitely part of an ongoing conversation as the state prepares for growth and more people looking for housing. In Spokane, Alexa Block, Creme 2 News. In other news, a cell phone and an ominous note could lead to answers in a local murder investigation. Investigators found Rizu Kashifi's body in the freezer of her own apartment. They also found a cell phone they believe belongs to the victim's husband, who is also a suspect in her death. Mark has more on what this could mean for the case now, Mark. Yeah, Jane, earlier this month, detectives found Kashifi's body hidden underneath the false bottom of a freezer in her apartment. During the search, investigators also found two cell phones and two cameras. A separate search of the family's minivan found a handwritten note believed to be written by Wahid Kashifi. That's the husband. The note reads in part, there is a video or two videos that you can watch and judge, unquote. The note also includes a cell phone code. Detectives believe that code could unlock one of those three cell phones found and potentially explain what led to Arizu's murder. As for Wahid, he left the country at the end of May. The sheriff's office still working to extradite him back to Spokane County. But first, they have to find him. Jane. Thank you, Mark. Meantime, strong winds and hot temperatures are raising fire concerns across eastern Washington. We could have some rain on the way as well. Michelle Boss in the Weather Center now with more on that. Michelle. Yeah, in the short term, we are talking about some pretty warm temperatures. Fortunately, we're going to be seeing a cool down over the next couple days and hopefully bringing some significant rain in the area by Thursday. But right now, it is just hot and dry. Lower 80s in the Spokane area, upper 80s from OMAC down to Moses Lake, lower 80s in Lewiston and a little bit cooler across the Idaho Panhandle temperatures generally in the low to mid 70s. As far as how dry it is, relative humidity is right now in the teens in many locations from Wenatchee to Omak to Deer Park. And we've been seeing the winds uh, kind of pick up over the last several hours. Spokane did recently have a wind gust near 40 miles per hour. I think that was at 4 o'clock and we've seen wind gust in the 20 to 30 mile per hour range from Wenatchee into Moses Lake. Red flag warnings are currently in effect from Wenatchee into Yakima along the east slopes of the Cascades for dry conditions and gusty winds and the red flag warning will be extended tomorrow to include the Columbia Basin and the Spokane area for those same reasons. Gusty winds 30 to 45 miles per hour and low relative humidity. And because of some of the stronger winds, areas shaded in tan here are under a wind advisory from now through Wednesday. Sustained winds in the 15 to 25 mile per hour range, but across the Waterville Plateau and some of the higher terrain, we could see wind gusts up to 55 miles per hour. So wind damage is a possibility. All right, it is dry across the region with uh, just partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies from eastern Washington to north northwest Montana. Windy conditions expected tomorrow with much cooler temperatures, highs in the lower 70s. We should see some rain on the way for Thursday, highs in the mid 60s, and then mostly cloudy on Friday with a high of 71. Thank you, Michelle. Now for a quick traffic update. Highway 20 is back open near Loop Loop Summit after a landslide forced it to close more than a month ago. Washington Department of Transportation says the contractor is wrapping up work on the eastbound lane but it's back open to drivers now. There are no longer any detours in the area, but also be on the lookout for construction workers there.